So I think patients come to palliative care through a number of different mechanisms. And so what that means is, while there's not one right way, that means there's no wrong way. So when thinking about outpatient palliative care, I wouldn't, so depending on one's insurance, it's possible that, that a referral could be needed, but oftentimes that is not the case anymore, which is great. Still, I think if you have a primary care physician or an oncologist of either your medical radiation, urologic, et cetera, talking to that provider is a great starting place. Just ask for a referral. They very well may have people with whom they are already collaborating and they can get you referred to that team and get you established. Also, there is a, a resource, which is a website provided by CAPSI, which is again the Center to Advance Palliative Care called getpalliativecare.org, simple enough name. And this is a way that you can kind of let your fingers do the walking investigate what resources may be nearby you or perhaps nearby a family member or a loved one who you think might benefit from palliative care. I will warn you, this is not all inclusive, and I'm embarrassed to say this, but my own outpatient palliative care team, which is quite a large one, to be perfectly honest, compared to many institutions with five outpatient palliative care physicians, three nurses, and an administrative person, our team is embarrassingly enough, not listed on getpalliativecare.org. And I don't know why that is, although I, after realizing that in the past few weeks, I certainly will fix that. But one thing that I would recommend is that if you see an inpatient palliative care team listed at the institution with whom you are a family member, loved one, et cetera, gets your care, you could, you could certainly inquire with that team to see if they have outpatient palliative care resources. If their program's anything like mine, they may say yes and be able to direct you there. On an inpatient basis, I will say I do think that often the primary medical team is sort of the gatekeeper for consultations. I think that if a, if a patient requests a palliative care consult, consultation for more support, I think it's pretty unlikely that they would decline to place that consult, but it may be something that you might have to ask for because inpatient palliative care consultation is rarely done um, automatically for hardly any patient populations. Sometimes it is within the context of a study and there are some programs, for example, a stem cell transplant team that sometimes people do get automatic consultations, but it may just be something you have to ask about. Even talking to your nurse, your, a physical therapist, your social worker, your inpatient case manager, anyone who's really a part of the medical team could probably help communicate with your primary medical team about that consultation. Thinking about home palliative care, this is more variable. It's really interesting. I think it's not, doesn't just have regional variation. It really has variation depending on the metropolitan area. So there are some palliative, home palliative care services that are available. Often they're uh, part of a hospice organization. And sometimes patients can get access to palliative care at home, but sometimes not. What I would say is that if you have interest in some of the conversations that palliative care might lead to. For example, about thinking about your goals, thinking about your values, thinking about documentation that you might need, like a power of attorney or a living will advanced directive. There's this wonderful resource that is I listed here for you called prepareforyourcare.org that has not only educational videos in English and Spanish, but also a link to, within the United States, the state-specific forms for a lot of these important um, medical decisions that might need to be communicated. For example, a healthcare power of attorney. So it's pretty cool. And as of the spring of 2018, every state had, a, had documents that were directly linked to that. If you were to go to prepareforyourcare.org to educate yourself or a family member or a loved one, then you can see with, you can, then that would spark great conversation with your primary care physician, your oncologist, anyone else who's an important part of your healthcare team, also your family members. So consider prepareforyourcare.org as another resource, either instead of or in addition to meeting with someone, um, depending on what your local resources are. I know a lot of Boy Scouts in my life, and so I think that it's important to be prepared whenever possible, and I want to give a little bit of anticipatory guidance based on what I've experienced. And specifically, I just want to mention that there's still lots of misconceptions about palliative care, including and especially among medical professionals. And so I think the reason I bring that up is to tell you that sometimes you make, you could be the, the person in the room who has the most knowledge about palliative care, even after just listening to this webinar. 
I mean that very seriously and literally. So what that could mean is if you ask someone for a palliative care consultation, that provider might have a misconception about palliative care, equate sort of conflating it with hospice and would say, oh, you don't need that yet. You don't want palliative care because we have lots of treatment options available to you or something along those lines. And so I think, again, what that means is not not necessarily that it's not actually an appropriate set of resources for you because having if you've made it to the end of this and you know that it's just for people who have a serious illness any age any stage so what that means is that you should not be deterred you get to be the educator and educate your provider and you can i think while i i can imagine that being on the other side of the stethoscope it could feel awkward to ask for something anyway i think doing so really could result in educating your provider and you could say, um, well, I, I understand that I, I don't need, uh, that I still have treatment options available and I'm so glad, but I'd like a consultation anyway. Or even by further educating your provider and saying, I've been reading about it and it looks like it's for anyone with a serious illness. How about this? Put in a consult and I'll report back to you and tell you how it goes. The truth is that your doctor, your advanced practice provider, we work for you. You're the boss. If it's something that seems important or helpful, it's okay to ask anyway, but self-referral is often possible too. So in conclusion, so we can get to questions, palliative care is whole, pretty holistic medical care focused on quality of life for anyone facing a serious illness and is appropriate for any age and any stage in a serious illness. It can and often should be given alongside standard, even really aggressive urology and oncology care, even with the intensive cure. And the hospice is a special form of palliative care that's limited to people who have a life expectancy of six months or less. Also, palliative care has the potential to improve outcomes that are really meaningful, like quality of life and symptom control. There's great palliative care research that's ongoing and will continue to be that I think, and I think if I have anything to say about it, there will be increasing palliative care research at the intersection with bladder cancer and that you can find nearby palliative care providers with getpalliativecare.org. So now I think we can probably open it up to questions that Stephanie will curate.